Hello, it's Mike, and I'm back with another room temperature mod video on my Valent Ecotech Plus combination boiler with weather compensation. It's been over a month since I posted a video on a room temperature mod, and the reason I've done that is because I wanted to really test room temperature mod equals expanded and make sure I didn't make any changes and the results are now out. As you can see, the yellow line, which is the indoor temperature, is pretty much consistent throughout the course of this past month. So around about the 19th of February, I switched over from room temperature mod equals active to expanded. But before I talk about what changes I made and how I've been able to achieve these consistent results, let me just go back and do a recap of what I discussed in my previous video. Basically, I'd been testing in the late part of January room temperature mod equals expanded, and I had a heat curve of 1.3. And then I wasn't really sure if expanded was the right setting to be on, but prior to that, I had been testing all sorts of options and heat curves and different timers, so I wanted a more consistent static setup, and that's why I went with expanded with a heat curve of 1.3. Then in the beginning of February, I switched over to inactive. Basically, inactive means that the, the boiler only makes use of the outdoor temperature sensor. So whatever the temperature is outside and whatever curve you happen to be on, that determines the flow temperature in the boiler, the, the water that is sent to your radiators to warm your room. There aren't any timers um, that you need to set up nor is there a set back temperature. All you do is you set the desired temperature to whatever you want. So I wanted 19 or 18, and that's it. The boiler is on 24 seven. And what I noticed in this first couple of days or even a week of February was that the gas bills were a lot higher than the last 10 days of January when I was running room temperature mod equals expanded. Now there is one caveat I should point out and I'll show you here on the, um, the last 10 days of January. The temperature during that period was a lot higher than it was in the first 10 days of February and I think that has made a difference. Obviously running room temperature mod inactive means that the boiler is on 24 seven as well. And you can see it's at a quite a high rate of 40 degrees. With it running the whole time, the, the gas bill is going to be a lot more expensive. And it was a lot cooler. Versus when it's on expanded, expanded has or makes use of timers. So you set your different timers. And while the timer is active, the boiler is on. And when it's inactive, it drops off which is why you see these quite large spikes from top to bottom. When it's at the bottom, that's when it's outside of the timer. And when it's at the top, it's either during the timer period or someone's running a hot water tap. And that's why it spikes to above 50. But in general, it runs just above 40 and to th between 30 and 40. And then anything outside is obviously outside of the timer. Now, as I said, inactive, I noticed it was a lot more expensive. It was at least a pound to a pound 50 more expensive than it was in January. After I switched over to active, active makes use of timers. And you can see that here with these green up and down, up and down, up and down. Now I had a timer of seven o'clock in the morning till about 10 o'clock and every single day there were two timers there was one in the morning one in the evening you'll also see that the indoor temperature never really hits the desired temperature places where it has hit the desired temperature is a result of me up in the heat curve from maybe 1.3 to 1.5 now that clearly was too much and this is why the indoor temperature went through the desired temperature but all through the previous days it never really reached that in hindsight as well setting the setback temperature to 17 and the desire to 19 is a little silly because you'd never want your indoor temperature to drop down to the 
set back temperature because then it'll take too long to get back to the desired temperature. This is something that you'll see when I talk about the next room temperature mod expanded. This is what I've changed and, and what I concluded was a mistake in these previous tests because during inactive I also had a desired temperature of 18 and then I kept changing it to 18.5 and then 19 and the reason why all of this was confusing in the first 19 days of February is because when you go and look at the manual, in the manual they show us setting the heat curve and they've got this lovely chart with all the different options or all the different heat curves that are available to the boiler. And they all work to a target room temperature of 20 degrees. Now if you've got a target room temperature of 19 degrees or 18 or 21 or 22, this chart is useless to you because it's not going to tell you the output information that you want to see. They do give an example a little further down where they show 18, 20, 22 and then the in-between numbers. But they don't actually give you an example. Now like 21 target temperature is too hot for our house. In fact, 19 is too hot. So I really wanted something that showed it at either 19 or 18. but it's very difficult to figure out just on this screen because the lowest heat curve here is 0.4. But the likelihood is I'm wanting a 1.3 or 1.4 and, and it's not catered for. That also was one of the changes that I made when I switched over to room temperature mod equals expanded. Now I never want, wanted the temperature, the indoor temperature to be 20. And Given I'd already tested um, the heat curve at 1.3 in late January, I knew that I would never really reach the desired temperature of 20. And that was actually a good thing. What I did was set the desired temperature to 20 and the setback temperature to 18. So it's still a two degree window from top to bottom, like it was when it was on active. I had it here at 19 and 17. But like I said, you'd never want the temperature to drop to 17 because that's too cold. And in fact, if it dropped even further, as you'll see in these examples here, it then has to start up again and work its way back to the top within the timer. So talking about the timers, one of my, one of my videos had a comment from somebody that said, Hey, Mike, I only use one timer. And that is late in the, the afternoon or early evening. And then it runs until before I go to bed. And then it turns off. And I thought, okay, that's interesting. Because in all the previous times, I've actually used uh, multiple timers in a day. Sometimes I've had up to three timers. And I've always felt that the indoor temperature would never reach the desired temperature in the small window that I'd set. What I did was I set a window starting at four o'clock and it would end at 11 o'clock. And as you can see in all of these examples right here, it never reaches the desired temperature, which is absolutely perfect because A, I'm only wanting the temperature to go to about 19.5 and B, it's long enough in that little timer to actually reach that desired temperature of 19.5 or 19 that I'm wanting. And the third thing that makes this a lot more interesting is that the fact that I've set the, the desired temperature to 20 degrees and the setback temperature to 18 degrees. And that is because I'm now matching the heat curve example in the manual. And this then really started to help a lot because now I was able to nail down the heat curve that I needed to be on. Now I wanted to be on 1.3. So what I did was I created a 1.3 line and I've assumed it's around about this position and I've placed it. Now obviously the target temperature is 20 and then I picked that heat curve of 1.3. And I watched it over a period of a, of, a, of a couple of days. And here is an example. 13th of March. It's during the timer period. You can see the yellow line has almost reached the desired temperature. So what I've done is I've put my cursor on my graph. And this is Home Assistant, by the way. I can get so much detail out of my boiler, data, I should say, out of my boiler to monitor all of this. It's been fantastic. 
But anyway, if you look at this little square here, you can see the current flow temperature is 46 degrees at that time. So what I've done is I've drawn a blue line from 46 degrees across the page. And then the outdoor temperature is 4.6. So remember I said when using um, expanded, it uses the outdoor um, temperature as well as the indoor temperature from the thermostat, the sensor comfort thermostat. And it also uses the heat curve. So that's why having the right heat curve is super important. I've got the outdoor temperature of 4.6. I've put it on there as around about at that point. And then I've gone up to the top. And where it crosses on the red line, that is basically what the desired temperature should be. Now, if you look at my desired temperature of 20, and then you look at the indoor temperature, I'm achieving a 19.8. That's only 2.2 degrees away from this target temperature. So with that information, I now know that the heat curve that I'm on is almost spot on. I wouldn't want to lower it, and I certainly wouldn't want to increase it, because I'm pretty sure if I increase it to 1.4, I will reach um, the desired temperature of 20 and the indoor temperature will be around about 20. And as I said, I'm not really keen on a 20 degree indoor temperature. I'm happy with the 19.5. So that slight negative is that the heat curve that I'm on is obviously not the right one, but it's actually perfect for this setup. And yeah, you go. Yeah, you can see that I've basically been maintaining this constant temperature throughout this time. Now, the way this expanded works is, so obviously I'm not reaching the desired temperature in the timer. But then when the, when the timer is off, the boiler turns off as well. And you can see that the indoor temperature then starts to drop off and drop off and drop off. And once it's dropped through the setback temperature by either 0.2 or 0.4, that's when it turns back on, the boiler turns back on. And you can see this in the current flow as well. So, for example, let's just pick this one over here. You can see it's dropped off, it's dropped off, dropped off, and then it's crossed through the setback temperature, and then it fires back up. And it does this throughout the time. If it's a very cold morning, because bear in mind, this timer is only on from 4 in the afternoon till 11 at night. If it's a very cold morning. What tends to happen is you see the indoor temperature drops below the setback temperature and then it fires back up. An example yeah, would be this day over here, the 24th of February. You can see it's dropped below the setback temperature. It's got to about 17.8, so 0.2 degrees. The boilers then come back on. It goes right back up to around about 18.17 or maybe call it 18.2 and then the boiler switches off. And it does that again. And then the next time it fires up, it's now in the start of the timer. And then, of course, it keeps rising. And that's in the evening now. And we have this lovely temperature of 19, 19.5. And then at 11 o'clock at night, the boiler switches off. And over the course of the night till the early morning, the temperature, indoor temperature drops. And you can see right here now, it's dropped below the setback temperature and then the boiler's coming on. Now bear in mind that's eight o'clock in the morning. So it's taken the whole night to drop down to 17.8. And that whole time we're in bed fast asleep. Really isn't a problem. And this is where you actually start to save money. You don't need to have your boiler on during that period. But if it's if you know it drops below 17.8 or 18 the boiler is going to come on and it's going to heat it up above 18. This has been absolutely the resolution, I should say. Room temperature mod set to expanded. And I've got a heat curve of 1.3. And what it has done, it's shown me, here is the um, where I turned on expanded. You can see that the gas bills are a lot lower than what they were in the first 19 days of February. Now, I will say again, if you look at the temperatures from the 21st of February till the end of the month, they were a lot higher than they were in the first part of February. Likewise, 
in January, they were a lot higher. I would almost say they are double. Therefore, if you were to double a February the 21st, which was around about two pounds, two pounds 50, that's about five pounds. It's still a lot less than what these days were. I mean, just to prove the point, here is the beginning of March, and you can see where it's cold, the most I ever paid was around about £4.50. Now, there's been a couple of days in the past week, let's say the 13th and 14th and 15th, where the temperature has dropped below zero or close to zero. And as a result, you can see it has spiked up. But again, I've never, since I changed it over to expanded, the daily bill has never gone over five pounds, not once. And yet, in the beginning parts of February and even the beginning parts of January, when I didn't know what I was doing, they were well over six pounds. So expanded through the course of all types of weather, because that's what I've proved as well in this whole month, that expanded is the way to go. And expanded with one timer and a heat curve of 1.3 and I'm achieving decent daily prices for gas. If you have any comments or questions or anything you'd like to know about, please leave them in the comment section. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. It really does get my video out to as many people as possible. Give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed what you saw in this video. And as usual, thank you very much for watching.